Welcome to my latest video and if you like engines, big engines, which I suspect you do, you're going to like this one. So I've got the big V12 American LaFrance project and I'm looking for parts and I'm looking particularly for a chassis. So I decided to go to Bewley and this happened. Ah, this is interesting. So the reason that engine sparked my interest is because it's derived from the Merlin engine. And the Merlin engine is possibly one of the most iconic engines ever built. Uh, the Merlin engine was the engine that was fitted to the Spitfire, Hurricane, Lancaster bomber, or Second World War fighter aircraft. That engine won the war. Well, possible exaggeration, but it, it certainly helped. So of course, I had to go and talk to the owner, didn't I? So I just had a very interesting chat with a very nice guy called Viv and he's got a Centurion tank for sale. Oh dear. Anyway, more about that another time I think. Okay, so what I should have said is that he's got a Centurion tank engine for sale. And also what I should have said is that not only has he got one of these engines for sale, he's got a few more of these engines and he's going to fit one of these engines to a car. So of course I had to talk to him. Anyway, this is what happened next. So I'm on the road again, and this time I'm off to see a couple of guys who are doing something very similar to me, in that they are putting a large engine into a large chassis, except they're putting an even bigger engine into an even bigger chassis. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they've been doing, and they've also got something very, very interesting to show me. I'd say cool, uh, but it's more than cool, it's awesome. So um, let's see what we see, shall we? So when I got there, it wasn't just a couple of guys, it was about 30 guys, and it was like a meeting of Engineaholics Anonymous. My name's Chris, and I'm an Engineaholic. Uh, but of course that was fantastic, because it means I got to talk to lots of people about lots of things. Uh, but anyway, first we had to get stuck into the main attraction. So, as promised, I'm here with Viv, who I met at Beauty, and we are looking at this, which is... Is you tell us Viv, what are we looking at? This is a 27 litre V12 meteor engine that uh, is used in the Centurion tank in the Second World War. Yeah. It's uh, derived from the Merlin, and, uh, so it's got a lot of common components but uh, the crankshaft, the rods, the pistons. The only difference between a Merlin and a Meteor is that the pistons in a Merlin are, are forged and yeah. the Meteor pistons are cast. But, uh, what you'll find is that a lot of the boys that um, have got ground running Merlins will have 90% of the components will have come from a Meteor. Right, so, I see. Uh, okay. So I can see this, this <coughs> is the oil filter, which is possibly the biggest oil filter I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and these, I understand these are the distributors. Uh, magnetos. Basically. Oh, the magnetos, right, yeah. okay. So it's a magneto ignition, not a coil ignition. Mm. And what looks like fuel injection rails are actually just this is the, the HD wheel, yeah, isn't it? the harness, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So, so these are the spark plugs here, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there's two sets of harnesses. There's a magneto on either side of yeah. the engine. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the, this magneto here is the inlet uh, magneto, so that runs all the spark plugs that are in the V. Right, I and see. And then on the other side, you've got the exhaust magneto, which runs all the spark plugs on the outside. Of okay, the and as it, when it runns, it will both spark. Uh, they both spark. But it is as resilient to only run on one yes. magneto. Yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, and can you switch off the magnetis individually you if can. you want to? Yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, next time we run it, we'll yeah. we'll do that. We'll okay. test the mags individually. Uh, okay. So, but cool. you, you'll see a, a slight drop. They call it a mag drop. Right. And that's a standard thing that they do on uh, aircraft okay. when they start and them on. Explain what all of these uh, pulleys are. Right. Well, this is the uh, the fan drive. That, uh, <laughs> so um, in the tank. There's, there's a large radiator which is yeah. sat above the engine at about this height. In fact, right. They're twin oh, rods, they, okay. they open up like yeah. that for access. But, uh, and so the, 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 these are the, uh, uh, the drives. Yeah. There's, um, there's belts that drive off up to the, up to the fans. Yeah. But, uh, 
That's right, yeah. They run over these uh, pulleys here, which tension the belts. Yeah. To, there's and this is some kind of damp. This is some kind of damper, this is, a is it? Damper, yeah. yeah. There's a, it's hydraulic. It's yeah, yeah. In there, so that'll tension the, the the fan belts. Okay. And then this is a an accessory drive. So there's a dynamo that sits on here. Right. That, uh, and that'll that's obviously for the electrical. Okay. The fine, fine. But you can't. The the, the thermostat housing is is taken off of here at the moment, and we've just come straight off the bypass. Okay. And, and that, that is uh, quite quite a lot uh, quite a big reservoir we saw when it was running it was absolutely flying yeah yeah, it? yeah there's yeah. A, there's a lot of flow on that it's pump. quite incredible so underneath these two enormous air scoops there <coughs> are the carbs presumably yes there's twin uh, zeniths and uh, updrafts uh, carburetors yeah there's a, a plenum chamber which runs the length of the v yeah and, uh, and uh, so the air is emitted into the plenum chamber and then uh, comes along the bottom of the carburetor and then comes up through the carb and then into the inlet manifold and each carburetor runs half the engine so that uh, they're they're twin choke carburetors yeah that, uh, and the one choke runs three cylinders that side the other choke runs three cylinders this side right and it's the same the other end that, uh, and they're linked by this linkage here so they'll uh, on the, the the throttle linkage, right. I see. Op operates both carbs at, at the same time. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, the uh, you can just see the inlet um, spark plug leads. Oh, uh, uh, I see. There, and Down inside there, yeah, yeah, yeah. To get to on the inlet plugs. And what so. about the lubrication system? How does that work? Right. Well, it's a dry sump system. Oh right. So, okay. So, so this we've is got our the dry remote, sump tank. This is the remote reservoir. Yeah. At, uh, which the oil is returned from. The, the scavenge pump, which is so the scavenge pump is scavenging the oil from the sump. And what's that driven from? Uh, that's driven off the wheel case, which is here at the end of the engine. So yeah. this wheel case uh, is a tower of gears, which is driven off directly off the end of the crankshaft. Yeah. And it handles all the timing requirements for the engine because if you come here, and you can just see these these two tubes here. Yeah. There, there's a shaft drive which drives up onto the end of the camshaft right, and okay. rotates the cam. So it's like a bevel gear so drive, bevel is it? Gear yeah, drive, yeah. yeah. So that, uh, so, and then there's uh, the uh, the tower gears are driven directly off the bottom of the crankshaft. Yeah. And that handles the the timing requirements for the engine. The it drives the magnetos, so it uh, handles that side of it, and it also drives the oil pumps. So right. on this side is the scavenge oil pump, which is scavenging oil directly from the crankcase, and back up to the tank. And then the oil is then brought back down into the engine, at, uh, and then pumped from on the high pressure side through the filter yeah at, uh, and then down into the um, into the, the pressure relief valve which is there on the side of the crank. I see okay I so. noticed there is oh okay I thought it was an adjustment it's not yeah it's just the specification on the That's side right. of it yeah and so this is the main oil gallery into yeah. it at, uh, which then goes off through into the crankcase yeah. and feeds the crankshaft right okay at, uh, and all the other loop uh, requirements on the the oil lines inside. Is it pressure fed through the center of the crank or is it uh, pressure fed into the side of the bearings you know? It's uh, pressure fed. Uh, it's pressure fed by either end. Yeah. And the crankshaft yes, is hollow. Yeah. Right. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then this line here on the pressure relief valve is what drives the or lubricates the fan. Right. Drive. I see. Okay. And then there's a separate one which comes up and lubricates the the, the gears. At okay. The end of the engine. So um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start it fairly soon, which is gonna yeah. be very exciting. But when we start it, what, can you just talk me through what the startup? procedure actually is right well from cold what we do is we we've got a primer pump so we put a, a priming circuit on there so we'll run oil up through onto this line here yeah but, uh, and then that, and that's just an electric pump that's just an electric yeah, yeah, yeah. pump so we'll we'll bring it up till we got 20 psi yeah so then we're happy that we've got pressure in the oil gallery yeah. and that we're feeding oil into the crank and up up through here into, yeah, yeah. The, into the cams at the top once we've done that at, uh, we can then isolate that and turn the priming pump off because yeah. we want that circuit out of it this here is a, um, a primer so, so we can prime fuel into the top of the engine right okay using this so that uh, I just turned off at the moment but so that you can primes see. it directly into the so carb bowls well, does it? what it does is it sends fuel directly into these four points on the inlet manifold 
Okay. And it so just injects neat fuel. It's just pouring fuel into the inlet Straight manifold. into the inlet right, okay. manifold, yeah. And, uh, across the top of these points here. But, uh, and that's just additional fuel because very large engines, it, uh, they, um, they, they, t they can turn quite slowly. Yeah. At, uh, and so getting them to, to suck enough fuel, obviously all that distance, it, uh, is, is quite hard. Yeah, yeah. So you just give them a bit of a kick. Just pour some in, basically. Just pour, yeah, yeah. pour yeah, some yeah. fuel in, really. Yeah. Okay, so we've, we've uh, <clears throat> pressurised the oil system with primed it with fuel yeah. and we we give it a bit of throttle a little bit of throttle and, and, uh, and then we just press the starter stand clear we've got the magnetos off at the moment right we, okay we switch the mags on and then she should run excellent well uh, we uh, thank you very much for that Viv we are very much looking forward to seeing that happen well we'll do that in a few <laughs> seconds right can you just talk us through exactly what you're going to do right so uh, we've primed the engine with the fuel up here yeah so uh, we're not going to bother um, priming it again on the oil side okay. because we've, we've just, just recently run it. Yeah. So all I've got to do now is put the magnetos on. Yeah. And it should be. Is one quick question? Go. Is it going to be loud? Uh, very loud. Okay. <laughs> Let's go for Ready? it. Ready. <laughs> I noticed we were ticking over. Big round of applause there. I noticed we were ticking over. What? 250 RPM? That's 1,000. Well, that's 1,000. So, so it's in, is it in 200 RPM increments? 200, it is, it? isn't it? It's a bit and 400 what, RPM. What will it actually RPM. rev to? Oh, well, uh, it's got a, a, um, a safety cutout at 2,500 RPM. Okay, is that built into the magnetos? Built into the yeah, magnetos, okay, right. yeah. 
but but uh, we didn't get anywhere near to no, no no and uh, we won't either because no. um it's running completely off load right okay but, uh, and we've heard horror stories of people revving them and um, right and, and letting break go. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, okay so we'll be very very careful <clears throat> well that was uh yeah i'm sure you agree that was absolutely fantastic thank you very much you're very welcome <laughs> So I'm sure you will agree that was pretty awesome. That was fantastic. And that alone was well worth going there and seeing all those guys. But I did also get a chance to talk to these guys about chassis. And there are three people there who are fitting large engines, very large engines, into Rolls-Royce Phantom chassis. Now, the Phantom is was the kind of top of the range Rolls-Royce in the 30s and is enormous. It was powered by a seven liter engine. Um, and but they are putting very large engines in there, like 27 litre engines in there. Um, and I think it's helped me because it pretty much ruled out a Phantom chassis for my project. It's, it's too expensive, it's too exotic, uh, and it's too big. So that's helped. It's helped to kind of weed out the various chassis. Um, but I did have another conversation with a guy called Bruce, and he's building a, well, he's built and he has a, a special which is a Liberty V12 engine. Again, if you know about engines, you'll know that the Liberty V12 is another rather iconic engine. Originally an aircraft engine, I think built in, designed in 1917. It's a kind of couple of generations in engineering terms behind the, uh, the Rolls-Royce um, uh, V12. Um, but it's a very impressive engine nevertheless. But anyway, he's fitted this engine into a Rolls-Royce 2025 chassis. And this is one that's currently on my list. So I think um, it means the Rolls-Royce 2025 stays on my list and is certainly a front runner. Um, I'm still also considering uh, a Delage. I've pretty much ruled out American chassis, I think. And I've pretty much ruled out truck or lorry chassis. Uh, because I really I want the end car to have the identity of the chassis rather than I don't really want it to be a truck. Um, so the chassis journey continues. So if you've got a chassis tucked away in your barn or in the shed or in the field down the end please do get in touch and let me know. I've had a few very generous people get in touch already and I'm going to be sharing all that information as well. Uh, but I think uh, that's about it for now. Uh, I'm also progressing the work to get the engine my engine started and that's progressing pretty well so there's going to be a video about that soon so if you want to know all about that please hit subscribe uh, please check out my shop if you want one of these awesome uh, tops with this awesome design by done, done by Stefan Marjoram uh, but I think that's all for now so thanks for watching